Find out about the exciting opportunities in video for business today, particularly if you're a speaker, if you're an author, if you're a coach, and you are a thought leader, as I put this together with Richard Lanham for the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This welcome. is the Blab designed for you in caps and build your business, build your life. And <laughs> Richard Lanham is our host for this. Richard, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can yeah. run and get things started. Yeah, no doubt. So first of all, let's get the name right. Grow your business, grow your life for caps. It's so it's series we're doing. So it's a good one to take care of. Um, you know, Terry, you're really kind about getting together with me and talking about technology and and uh, interesting thing happened. And I want to share this story uh, uh, with the members of CAPS or the other people who are on here. I was at the CAPS conference uh, in December in Halifax, having a great time. And an interesting thing started happening is that people started coming up to me asking me, hey, could we do more video? That was the one thing. And so a lot more live type chats. And the second thing was they asked me if I could bring you back with something new in 2016. Um, so that was a, and I had a lot of people request that. So out of uh, uh, the number of series that I did last year in 2015, it just turned out that what we did last uh, last fall, people really got into when we started talking about Google Hangouts and, and I think it was Webinar Jam uh, sitting on top of it. Maybe I got the term incorrect or you can correct me on that. And then just the different technology. So so to be able to come back with something blab in a beta format is, is really great. So. In that way, I want to welcome you to the show, and I want to welcome everybody else too. I mean, this is your uh, one of the the series for 2016 for Grow Your Business, Grow Your Life. So, Terry, I, I could get into an introduction for you. I mean, but I think a lot of people already know you. But I, I do want to mention a few highlights, and just for everybody, I am going to do the old yes, I have some notes, and that's and a good I'm play, Yeah, I'm going to play with how Terry and I did it last week with uh, with uh, post-it notes and things, and and so a little bit of the old, but some of the new, right? Uh, yeah. So, you know, Terry, you, I know you've been a speaker since 1993, and you definitely know technology, social media, and marketing, uh, definitely ideas for speakers, authors, and coaches. One of the things I find fascinating about your signature presently on your email, and we were talking about it this morning, was your contributing writer for the business journalist, um, 43 papers across USA with around 11 million page views monthly, like 11 million page views monthly, and that just astonished me. Great, great number. And you're also honored recently to be part of a TEDx uh, organization or speech uh, where you were a little bit overwhelmed by technology. Uh, I know we're going to talk about Blab, but could you tell us a little bit about your TEDx experience before we sort of get started with this? Oh, yeah. That was where I talked about how to overcome overwhelmed. That okay. was the title of the speech, Overcome Overwhelmed. And I gave ideas that people can use so that when they think, oh, my goodness, all this technology, what am I going to do? I can't handle it all. Yeah. Yeah. Specific, very simple step-by-step -step instructions of what to do. Now, so we would encourage people to go over to YouTube and in YouTube <laughs> put in Terry Brock TEDx. If you put those three <laughs> terms in at Terry Brock TEDx, you get to see the whole thing. And I'm, and I'm going to pay for all of that uh, on YouTube if, if you do it. So it's just it's on me if you go over there and do it. I was actually thinking, you know, after I saw it on your uh, on your email signature, and I just thought a brilliant thing to do, right? I mean, because we're always as speakers trying to redo our signature and creative, creative, and creative, keep it relevant. Um, um, I went and took a look at that particular video, and and yeah, it was really good stuff. And like anybody else, I mean, it's so easy to get overwhelmed by technology. I mean, even today we're talking about something new, Blab, uh, you know, and and I'm assuming that most people that are online with us right now. Uh, um, maybe don't know what it is, right? So, you know, those are some things to, to take into consideration. So, so why don't we just jump right in? You know, I'm going to hand it over to you right now just briefly with the first question is just going to be very simple. What is Blab and how can we use it? Yeah, Blab is a tool that gives you the ability to broadcast. We wanted to show you this. So it's not yes. just theory. This is not just standing up going, ah, oh, this is what you can do. No, 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 no. This is the real world oh, stuff. We're live. We're yeah, definitely live. exactly. And, I, and folks watching, I want you to know Richard was so kind, so gracious and willing to say, let's give it a shot. Oh, know, yeah. Let's see what happens. And if we make a mistake, if there's some, oh, whoops that happens, hey, we roll yeah, with it. It's kind of like, let's think it. about it. You're professional speakers. Those of you watching this are professional you've had times when if you've done it for any amount of time Richard you know this is true something could go wrong oh, something can happen there's an old whoops of whatever wrong. it is and yeah. the mark of the professional is that you know how to handle that you know yeah, what to do yeah. and roll with the punches often 
with all due respect, many of the industry speakers that come in, they can often do a good job speaking. They might have a script down. They can do it. They yep. know when to say a joke. They know when to do it. And that's good. But the real professionals are the ones that say, okay, when something goes wrong, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. So we want to try this. And uh, let's go for it with Blab because it has so much enormous potential. It is a game changer for the way that we present and the way we make money now. So so let's start off with a little bit about Blab because I've been exploring. So um, just for, and I'm sure people are on with us right now can already see this, but on the right-hand side, we have live chat, okay? And on the left-hand side, we have the ability to look at questions and obviously post questions. So so that's sort of really cool. Maybe, maybe we can start off with the live chat piece. So tell us a little bit about the live chat. Yeah, the live chat, you'll see over on the right, this gives you the ability to send a message so that you can send a, a message to people. We're also seeing who came on board. Like right now, we see David. Yeah is there and uh, uh, out there. What is Terry's middle name? He is asking right now. And we will have to let you know that a little bit later. Secret. Yeah. Yeah. But anything to keep them on board. You know, it's like they did in TV right but, after this commercial message. We, you know, that kind of thing. So but if, you, we, but if you guess it, there's a hundred uh, monopoly dollars in it for you. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, we have uh, live chat is where you get a chance to leave all kinds of information. So you can leave information. Monique is there. Hi, Monique. Good to have you here yeah. with us today. And uh, we've got, uh, we can see the live chat of who is here, what's going on. And then over on the other side, where we can put in questions, we can also put in information that you can send out uh, live to people around the world and share information to Twitter or to Facebook as well. Okay, so here's my next question for you. So I've noticed you've clicked on, now you've set me up as co-host at this point, right? Yes, you, you are. Co- you set this up, so I'm set up as co-host. I notice on the left-hand side that I have the ability there's the word record there. You've already clicked record. As a co-host, yeah. can I record also? Uh, let's see. It is actually being recorded in the cloud. That in means cloud? that when we finish this, it will be sent to YouTube. So we'll okay. be able to have it, which, by the way, in most cases, for those of us that are professional speakers, you're going to want to use this in a free, open, public forum so you yes. can send information out and record it. Then later on, it can be repurposed. That way you can have it, of course, on YouTube for video. You could then download the MP4 of that to have it as something that you might give away with other packages that doesn't necessarily have to be accessed. You can also get the audio from it. <clears throat> and then be able to uh, go back from there and do a lot of other ways so, uh, relating to the monetization of it, which is really important. Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand making money is a good thing up in Canada also. Is that correct? <laughs> well, you know, the interesting thing of difference between Canada and the United States when it comes to CAPS and NSA, we can talk about making money. So that's, that's a right. good thing. Now, you can use we have, actual, in Canada, you can use actual numbers. In we the use States, actual numbers. The Federal Trade Commission, which is protecting us and making sure that we're not harmed by hearing, oh no, somebody said a number you know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> now we, we, we open, uh, we open, we talk openly about uh, in caps, uh, how to make money. And really that's what this org- this series is about, Grow Your Business, Grow Your Life, is, is really how do you become a successful speaker? And part of being a successful speaker is monetizing your business. It's, it's not just going out and speaking, you know, at, at, at I don't know, 100 gigs a year or whatever. It's, it's like really looking at how do you build a business and then how do you create multiple revenue sources um, uh, in your business? So how do you monetize it overall? So yeah, and, and hopefully that gives everybody online here a better life. You know, grow your business, grow your life. You know? Yeah, absolutely. One nice thing is what you'll notice, uh, Richard, we have the questions that are coming in over on yes. the other side. This is something I want you, those of you that are speakers, I want you to kind of operate on two levels here. On one level, we want you to participate, be involved in the live chat. And at a certain point, we're going to ask people to come in and talk to us. We can actually see you live on the screen. But also, I want you to kind of watch between the lines and notice what is possible to do and start thinking, hmm, how could I use that? Or maybe I could do this with a product or something coming up. We want to give you tools so that you could do this right away. I mean, immediately, not like in three months from now, but right away this afternoon, if you wanted to do a blab, foreseeably, you could do that. Oh, and, and it doesn't take much to do it. I played around with them last week, like I said. You know, one of the things I was mentioning earlier on, I wanted to share this story, is, is uh, on Thursday after you and I met in the morning, I went online, I think it was more Friday I did this, and I joined two blabs. I joined one uh, with uh, a fairly well-known uh, hip-hop artist, 
and uh, just happened to be online. Somebody was interviewing them and they were just sitting around on their sofas and, and just all relaxed, having a coffee and just talking about the music business. And it was fascinating. I, I don't recall the last time I had such access to um, to somebody just sort of like just click on something. They're there. Uh, they're feeling questions. They're the whole conversation going on. And then the other thing I did was uh, I attended a uh, Blab conference and it turned out that I promoted way in advance. It was a full day and it was broken down like any other conference. They, you know, it was all 60 minute pieces and there's different speakers uh, per segment and each speaker had their topic and somebody uh, moderated the, that particular conference. And the other thing they did was there was somebody in the back who actually handled the rendering of all the video. So after the conference was over, it was rendered and then put up on the YouTube. So the information is out there. And uh, I had the opportunity, like some of the experts in the world in the area of um, blogging, for example, or setting up your website to monetize it or to to uh, get email addresses immediately when somebody clicks on something that you provided. It was it was full of great content and I found it was a great way for me to sit back on a Friday afternoon and learn something new in my business. So, yeah, I just absolutely. It's a lot of various uh, capabilities. Matter of fact, one of the things I would like to do today also, Richard, with your assistance, we've had several good questions coming in over here on the right side. And so I have you kind of keep an eye on that. And then what we can do is we can talk about them. Uh, Monique had a question about, can this be private? Uh, yep. Still a few weeks ago, it could not but it can now. When yeah. you set it up, you can select public or unlisted. Richard and I were using the unlisted uh, part of it, Monique, when uh, we were doing some testing for this. We did one test when it was public, then we did another one earlier today where we were testing it and it was unlisted. So only those who have the address, the specific URL, would be able to do it. Right now, we purposely want this to go out to the world and it's going public. So anyone could click in the URL copy that, send it over to your friends and go, hey, you ought to join them. They're saying great things here and it can bring in more people that way. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. Now, let's ask another question. Is there a fee for it? Uh, and I know you and I talked about that earlier this morning. Where's this? What's the scoop on the fee? Fee is no, there is no charge for it. There's no advertising. That notice in the upper left corner, everyone's eyes gradually move up there to the upper left. You'll see Blab Beta. And beta or beta, I think, as they say over in the UK. Uh, so you have the beta or beta, depending on which side of the pond you're on. And uh, that means they're testing it. However, I really love what their CEO said of Blab, genius guy in marketing. He said, there's never been a social media platform that accumulated a million or more people that couldn't figure out how to monetize that. So the real key is, I think that's good for you and me to know, don't worry so much about making money and I want to keep it safe and keep it protected and all that when you're starting. Do it in a way that gives information. David Newman, our buddy who's joined us here, my buddy up in uh, Philadelphia, says it very well of giving constantly, giving lots of information. David not only talks about that, he does it and gives a lot of information. That's a model for you as a professional speaker, as an author, as a thought leader. Give lots of value, and then you'll find ways to creatively monetize that. And that's something we want to get into in the course of this to say, okay, it's nice to give away free, but how do we pay the bills? I, yeah. Richard, I don't know about you there in Winnipeg, but here in Orlando, when I go to the grocery store, they don't care how many likes I have. They, <laughs> no, they really no. don't. They don't care how many times it was retweeted or something. No, they, they never have asked me that at the grocery store. They always say, okay, how are you going to pay for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A piece of plastic cash, that has to be paid later or mm -hmm. green pieces of paper. We use the green ones down here with pictures of deceased notables yeah, on that. More we're just a more colorful culture. When you are more colorful. Money. That's right. You got loonies and moonies and all those that's good things too. Yeah, but that's because our winters are so white. Um, uh -huh. You know, uh, so uh, there's a question from Monique again. Can you change it afterwards from pro public to private to repurpose it later? And uh, I think that is yes. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you would be able to do that. What you would do is on, uh, for instance, if it's on YouTube, you would change it from public to an unlisted or a private, or yeah. you could also download it from YouTube as an MP4 and then erase it from YouTube. If it's your channel, you could erase that, delete it and keep the MP4 to be placed in uh, something like Vimeo or some other tools that give you the ability to keep it secure. However, keep in mind anything that's on the net. And I use the word anything, anything. carefully. Anything yeah. can be tapped into by hackers, by people that yeah. want to steal it. Uh, look, if they can get into the personal information and human resources information of the federal government, 
which is yeah. what they did, and expose yeah. that in the United States, that means nothing is secure. The yeah. IRS in the United States, the Infernal Revenue Service, as we like to call it, uh, is not secure. They say, oh, well, only we will see it. No, no, no. They've been hacked before. So just be aware that anything you put online, it could be taken. And so if you go with that premise, then you're going to be okay. If you yeah. think mainly how you want to use this is to put out your content. Put out content that you have that is good. And yes, there are times people are going to steal it and then give it to 40 million of their closest friends in Outers Labuvia, wherever Outers Labuvia happens to be. But yeah. what you'll want to do is realize, okay, you design your material differently and you proceed accordingly. Yeah, and you got to make that decision no matter what you put out in the marketplace. If you write a book, you turn it into an ebook, and away it goes. I mean, it can be taken at any point in time um, anyway and then redistributed or other people can profit from it. Um, so, I mean, it, it is a bit of a challenge, but we're in a we're in an era of content marketing or content development. And right. I think pretty much uh, um, as professional speakers, we got to get really used to the idea that we generate content. I, I, I had the opportunity to hear uh, Hugh Culver speak. Um, I think it was last week or week before. And he was talking about being a content marketer. And he was talking about the story of the speaking business. And I had to agree with him. And what he said was, uh, since 2010, the speaking business or the consulting business overall has changed immensely. We've gone from uh, a, a space in which you can maybe provide a bit of content to where now you have to regularly be willing to open up and provide content. Yeah. And maybe it's content that previously you're, you got paid for. And that may not be an option anymore. You know, and so um, even as speakers, we're looking for new ways to monetize and 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 creative ways to monetize the services or our offerings. And I think that becomes ex extremely important as yeah. we go forward in business. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think that's also puts an emphasis on being able to be creative because yes, you need to creative. out create your competition. People mm -hmm. are going to find what you have. And when you think about it in today's world, if you put something out in content in the form of a blog, an audio, a video, wherever it is, somehow, some way people can get it and start, uh, they can take it from you, they can steal it. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. even though we can use certain safeguards for that, it's kind of like, get over it. It's going to happen. So what you do is you out create them and you yeah. can always deliver it in a very creative way that others can't. Because we're doing yeah. a blog right now. Every Every word that you and I are saying is being recorded. Yeah. Someone yeah. could get that, transcribe it, and repeat it back word for word, even with inflections and everything that we do. But what we've got to do is be able to be more creative. But, yeah. And having yeah. said that, one of the things I did creatively is I figured out a way today to get some slides I want to share with you, something we could not do on Blab just until a few uh, weeks ago. Now we can yeah. do it. And so, Richard, would now be a good time to bring that in? I was, you know, it's funny you would say that because I'm sitting there going, okay, I want to bring the slides in now. <laughs> so oh, let's do that. Too. And I'm thinking alike. Oh, time, we were thinking alike. So Here's that's why I'm laughing. He's going to click a couple of things here. And then in just a moment, uh, click let's a, see. Click oh, yeah. Now the drop-ins won't show in the, in the recordings, they say. So uh, that's all right. And yeah. what we're going to do is we're uh, loading that right now. And Richard, on the screen, you should see uh, my first slide. What do you see there? I see how to monetize video on blabs and with video blab and more. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Sorry, I said that wrong, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's right. That's we get, we get, you're a professional yeah, speaker, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just talking well, ladies backwards. Ladies and gentlemen, this today. is called extemporaneous and live, and we go with it, whatever. It's like the show was going on, and that's okay. Note okay. the emphasis is on the and more. I want you to know, yeah. I paid extra for that little ampersand there, Richard. Did it's you? there, that's, the that's and more. So we're bringing that in. But uh, we're doing that. And I think you got ripped off. What's that? <laughs> I think you got ripped off. Yeah, did you see the, the nice uh, touch of bringing in the Caps logo? Yeah. Yeah, so that means as a speaker, people are going, oh, wow, really customized. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And actually, it really is. Because uh, today, video is a real incredible way of doing it. Matter of fact, this is a slide I actually used. I brought it in just as is. Uh, yeah. Over on the left side, you see video not just for TV anymore. And over on the other side... Video no solo para la televisión nuna, nunca más. If I'm, I hope I'm saying that properly. I'm studying Spanish right now for all of our Spanish speaking uh, people out there. Yeah, you're going to Canada, Terry, and you're using Spanish. That's real good there, Sparky. <laughs> French would have been better. <laughs> French would have been better, Terry. <laughs> you know, but, but we did. But I did that from a speech I gave uh, just a couple of days ago to a group of Spanish speaking people, all from Mexico. So uh, they sp they didn't speak Mexican. They spoke Spanish, and uh, we were able to uh, use that. But uh, video really is no longer just about TV. 
Uh, it's now about so much that we're doing, and this is where we as speakers really can excel. It, actually, that reminds me of a little sign I saw when I was in St. Petersburg, Russia, a while ago. I was walking down Nevsky Prospect. It's the main drag there in uh, St. Petersburg, a very historic place. And I saw a restaurant with a big sign on it, and it said, Vodka, it's not <laughs> just for breakfast anymore. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> so the video is not just for TV anymore. Now we're using it in a host of ways. One way that I have used, and this is something I'd encourage you to write this down. Here is one of the most powerful marketing tools I've seen. It's called iJot. It's been out for a while now, and there's some other opportunities as well. But iJot gives you the ability to send a video email. Great little tool to customize and personalize what you're sending out as your message. Another way to do that, I just did this uh, this morning as well is YouTube. You can use it as unlisted or private video. That's what they lost videos. Acultas o privadas. And I think anyone that speaks Spanish is going to go, Terry, you're butchering that terribly. But uh, <laughs> you can send a private and unlisted video on YouTube to someone. And that way, only the two of you or you in that group, small group, would be able to see it. It's a great mm -hmm. way to send a message to people that people know it's not a form letter. It's not something that you just pulled off the shelf, but it's really you doing it. So I encourage you to look into that. And here's so I just want to just want to pause you for a second here sure. because this is all really good stuff. And but I'm also uh, watching the questions that are going by. So we're still getting lots of questions about uh, Blab. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to make sure that we don't miss these uh, on some of the ones that are here. So one of ones. Uh, did you say the slides will not be uh, recorded on video so that I, I pretty much heard you say that, correct? Yes, that was the message that I got from uh, what they showed here on Blab. It does not have a way to capture what's there so that right now, those of you that are joining us live are seeing the zoom.us and the little graphic there. Those that are watching this on video would not see that. That's something that. that's out okay. of our control. It's just part of the way the architecture and the uh, algorithms that they're using with Blab right now. So you need to take that into consideration. And the other one is on my screen, there is an indication box, all seats taken. Is there a limit to the number of attendees? Ah, there is not a limit to the number of attendees. However, there is a limit, a strict limit of only four four people maximum at any one time that can be on the screen that you yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. That's so that, Right now, yeah. we can't bring any more in because notice how it's happening. Those of you that are joining us live and watching this, we have my video and Richard's video on the bottom of the screen, and then there's uh, one on the top that is taking. We could bring in one other person. We, we have three on the bottom, and then my video is on the, top. the top. And that's, so your that's, that's the four limitation. That gives and that you the video I'm limitation. showing, here's how I'm doing it. Let me just kind of pull the curtain back here and tell you as speakers what we're talking about with this. Uh, I'm able to bring those slides in. I created them in Keynote like PowerPoint, Keynote on my Mac. And then I took that over to SlideShare. By you using go. SlideShare, which point. is part of LinkedIn, then I could do it. I could also show you a video on YouTube. So I could bring in or a video from whatever, or if I wanted to go in and bring in a special uh, website to say, oh, here's the website. And I would just put the URL in there, copy it in, and you would be able to see that on the screen. As a host, I can do that. Yeah. I have made Richard a co-host so he could do it uh, as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, they've taken Blab and they've integrated it with two other technologies uh, that most people are familiar with, you know, the, the YouTube technology and the SlideShare technology uh, so that you can take advantage of those platforms. Yeah, and I noticed we had a really important, uh, we got a lot of good questions. We love these questions that are coming through yeah. here on this. Uh, someone asked, uh, do, can you share the screen? Yeah, I wish we question. could. We cannot yeah. share the screen yet. That's something they're working on. We've asked Blab about that, and they're wonderful people, by the way. Their support is yeah. just superb. Uh, they do it. Jason, who is might catch this sometime, who is the uh, uh, Blab Stud. That's his handle at Blab Great Stud. Time. He is located in the nine o five area code. Richard, where is nine o five area code? Um, Ontario, isn't it? Yes, no? Ontario, just outside yeah. Toronto, in the Toronto area. Yeah. And yeah. he is in charge of their support. Does a superb job. I think that says something for to get the best in support. They went to Canada and uh, they did a great job, but uh, they really do a good job on it. But they're working on sharing screen. We don't have it yet. And that is something that we would use often as speakers, which is why I have to send it over to SlideShare, send my slides over to SlideShare versus going over to uh, PowerPoint itself and just playing that and sharing my screen as we do with tools like Zoom or Google Hangout or Skype or tools like that. 
Out of curiosity, you know where those little two hands are at the bottom right-hand corner of our video? There's a number beside it, 223, 224, 233, 233, or 234. Is that the number of high fives people are giving yes, you? Is that what it's called? Is. Okay. By the way, let me also, since you mentioned that, Richard, this yeah. is a great way. It's wonderful when people do that. And thank you so much. Oh, I feel the tingling up and down my spine. <laughs> I want more. It's a competition. I'm competitive. <laughs> there we are. It's a little competitive. Come on. We can do it more. Yeah. We can do it. We can do it. We, can do it. we love those ones. And by the way, this is a really good thing to do also because as speakers, once we get past the, yeah, vote for me, give me props and give me applause. It's like a little applaud. You notice the hands. Yeah, yeah. So it's giving people props, uh, applause there. But it's also a really good way to watch what you're doing when you're talking about something as a speaker. You yeah. get into a subject, you might have. Now, let's talk about topic A. Topic A, da 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 da, -da and watch how many props are coming through. However, there's topic B, and now you're getting flooded with props. That's a good nonverbal way to do an instant research and find okay. out in a rudimentary way, do people like that? You know, you can say, now, if you like A, give me some props on A. If you like okay. B, how about B. that? Or, and how about C? We've got option C. What about that one? And you can get a good feel for all of the people that are there. And they're all uh, able to put it in there relatively anonymously. We do see pictures of the coming through initially. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, if you, you can see quickly, wow, look how we jumped up to this level uh, when we yeah. had the, uh, the props going. Where the props going. I also like the other piece too, when you talk about voting on things or uh, doing instant research, because you got the live chat box, you're right, you can pose a question and also have that out of the live chat box too, which is which is similar to any kind of webinar. So, yeah. so you're sort of getting a bit of a, uh, a combination here. You know, you look at some of the webinar services uh, that we've all used, you know, you've got the chat box, you've got a button and you've got the presentation. Uh, that we're seeing right now that's coming out of SlideShare, but we got the added benefit of video and video recording. So, yeah. I mean, that right away just pops it up to, you know, a level that we, without using a whole bunch of tools and bring them all together and stuff like this, similar to uh, Google Hangout and Webinar Jam, and you happen to have these two different tools, you got to do the interface. They've done it for you. Like Blab has done this for you. Yeah, exactly. Well, let me go back to the slides here when we're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's come back. US, that's a tool that I highly recommend, and that's a whole seminar by itself. But write that down. If you haven't been using Zoom, you want to look into that. Sharon and I were able to do some things with that over in Donald Cooper's office just recently and saw it for the first time and uh, being able to go in there, work with that and see it. I'm using it regularly now for recording interviews. It is fabulous. And okay. I, in all full disclosure... I was the former, uh, I'm former now, a chief enterprise blogger with Skype. I worked with Skype, wonderful company, wonderful people that were there. And so I'm very familiar with Skype, love that tool, but I really like Zoom now because it has the built-in recording already there. Nice. It does it for you. And those that get into it very quickly see, oh my goodness, this is really nice for recording, for sharing screen, for sharing your, what's on your smartphone. You can take what's on your smartphone and share the screen, both iOS and Android. So that way you've got, you can say, hey, everybody, look at this new app I want to show you. Bop, 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 bop. And as you're doing it, it's showing fully on the screen and you're recording it. So Zoom is a good tool that I would recommend as a professional speaker. You write it down, put it, tuck it in the back of your mind. You can go get a free account. Of, they have a free and then a couple of paid versions in various ways you can be involved. So get involved with that. Well, here, let me get into something about how professional speakers can monetize this. I want to show you ways you can get your get some money from this. Get your pen and paper ready to go or your note-taking device of choice ready to go here, and we're going to have some fun with this. Let's, and let's Richard, add you had something you want to mention. Yeah, just want to add in. Uh, do take notes, but also recognize that this presentation will be available to us afterwards, too. So if you want to listen to it again or you want to go watch it again, it will be available. The only thing that won't be available based on our discussion about uh, can you record the slides is that the slides are not recordable but um, maybe there's some way you can make the slides available to us um, privately. We, we can do something like yeah absolutely and what you could do is you might want to consider in a situation where many are like that there are a lot of tools like that that do not allow you to record or they don't yeah. record the program there you might use an external third party like I use Camtasia.
Okay. Camtasia, I use Camtasia for Mac, C-Mac, we call it. There's Camtasia Studio that's over on the other side with the, what do they call those things? Uh, win windows, I think. Yeah, Windows things. You know, not, not a real computer. The dark side. A real, <laughs> ah, I'm just kidding. You, I love, actually, Windows have really uh, come out with their version 10. I'm hearing good things. But anyway, I'm digressing. Let me get into some of the ways okay. you can monetize this. This is really important. Yeah, now, good. wait a minute, Terry. You're talking about monetizing and you use the word free. Yeah, well, what's up? <laughs> it's a w free way to promote your products. Here's something that we have seen that works. We have had several decades where we have demonstrated that you can make literally trillions, I'm not exaggerating, trillions of dollars with free programs and you use sponsors, advertising. We've had that on a medium called, of course, television. Tele think of it like television. What you do is you have a sponsor, and your sponsor could be someone else that says, gee, I like what you're doing. I like what Sally Speaker is doing. She's really good. Therefore, we'll give X dollars. Or, excuse me, more likely, it might be that you have a product. You might have a webinar. You might have uh, something that you do, an online course. Many of us now have these online courses. And so you can use that to promote your products. You can promote your webinars. You can promote your speeches, promote those, your seminars, and you can do a lot with that. So think in terms of how you can offer something free, a freemium, and then have a premium. This is a way that we're doing a lot of marketing in today's world, and I encourage you to look into that. And another way you can do it, this is really important for those of us who are speakers, bond with your audience before the event. Uh -oh, for instance, that's actually really good. That's yeah. actually really good. When you go somewhere and speak, many times they don't know you. We're not celebrities, most of us. You know, we become a mini celebrity once we're there and they've heard us speak. We do a good job and, oh, they want to shake our hands and all that. That's good. But when we walk in, they don't know us from a, a sack of turnips. You know, it's like, okay, well, you know, who are you? Well, you can do this. And matter of fact, it's something that I have done using Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts is great for this because people get in, they can work with it. And here's an example right here. This is uh, Woody and uh, Denny, anyone here, I imagine, knows uh, Woody or Denny? Probably not. But they no. are hits. They are really successful business people in the Unified Group. That was a group I worked with. We spoke there, got a chance to talk with people about a lot of different things. And before we were there at their meeting, I think the meeting was in uh, Las Vegas or somewhere. And what I did is I went on with him. Woody was over on the East Coast. Denny's over on the West Coast. They're well-known, well-respected in that group. And I went to the meeting planner and asked to get names of, of two people. I coached Woody, coached Denny how to get into Google Hangout, how to use it, the equipment to buy. We did this a couple of weeks before we did the event. And then we went went on and we had them talking about what's going on in the industry, what's working today, what's not working, how things have changed in the industry, et cetera, et cetera. And this gave something that was sparkling brand new that they had never seen before. And we were able to do this as a live television show around the entire country, around the world. Anyone that was uh, got the URL was able to join us. Their yeah. executive director was able to send that out to all their members saying, join us uh, at Tuesday at one o'clock or whatever it was, and people could come in and could see it. And so there was a lot of opportunities. It's a way for you to provide extra value. Now, I usually do this as a uh, part of my speaking. This is something when I'm getting my fee, I put that in there. I work this out when possible. You could also charge a premium for it. You can have a tiered way of delivery. Why well, deliver it with this without it? I charge this much if I do it. So you could do something like that. But by doing this, it bonded me more with the people in the audience because when I then went to the event, when we had the actual event speaking there, many, many people came up to me as if they knew me. Terry, loved you. Hey, that was great. We really enjoyed that program you did, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is a unique way for you as a speaker to bond and you you can see what it's like and be able to do a lot more with that. So I would encourage you to get into that. Those are uh, uh, four ways you can do it. And, and then number five, selling online. Many people are doing this now successfully where as they're doing a program like this, they make an offer and say, hey, we're selling these today and you can buy them for only this price. But if you buy it today, don't answer because you get this with you. And if you also buy today, you get one of these, et cetera, or whatever. So selling is, online has a lot of uh, capabilities. In, in, uh, and so I got a question around that because in terms of, uh, sorry, I'm just grabbing something, but in terms of our culture, 
um, uh, and the use of blog uh, or blab is is it considered an acceptable thing to actually sell in these particular platforms at this point in time? Like, is and is that is that cool? Sure, many people are doing that, and I think it all depends on your personality and, your, more importantly, your audience and how okay. you present it. So it is possible you can sell, but you also want to remember if you just come out and go, "Hi, I'm wonderful, buy my stuff," <laughs> people are going to turn it off. And yeah. they should. I mean, that's what we all do. Think about yeah. it. I mean, you don't want to see people trying to sell their stuff to you. Instead, what you want is something that provides an opportunity. And if they're saying, we're going to give you this, this, and this, it's going to be worth this much money to you. Notice my hands are off the screen. This yeah. much money to you, but it's only going to cost you this much. Hey, that's a good uh, business decision. Yeah. And, so, and that, yeah. you know, I think that's an important question to, to make sure that we ask and answer because I, I do know some CAPS members or, or any people in the consulting business, they're not comfortable with the idea of selling. But, um, you know, if you're providing value based content uh, for your audience, then what's wrong with actually putting your book up and say, you know, go to my website and buy my book? You know, yeah. set for success, <laughs> right? It was plug there, right? Go to That's braveworld.ca right. and go click on my book and you can buy a copy of it. There you go. That's how you do a plug. <laughs> Exactly. I'm sure I'm going to get like another thing. Too. I want to go through here. Number six, seven and eight. You go can. Ahead. Have, I'm sorry. What's that? No, go ahead, do it. Yeah, the uh, six uh, video products. So that what you're doing here, you can have an interview. Think about this with Blab. You could have you on there as a moderator and bring in two people, even three. Two might be better, just that it's easier. That have maybe differing views on a particular topic. So let's say you're in the widget industry and there's Mary over in Halifax and she has a strong view on this particular issue. But then there's also Betty over in Vancouver. And so you bring the two of them on at the same time and you're saying, well, Mary, what do you think about the new oodly woodlies problem? Well, I think we ought to do this and this. Well, Betty, what do you think about that? Well, I think we ought to do this and this and this. You create some product that way that can be very relevant to that group, very relevant to them. And by just, just using something like Blab, you've got a product created and like that. Go. And of course, yeah. extract the audio from it and you're able to go from there. What was that, Richard? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, had, uh, I, you know, I do a radio show and, and some of the best radio shows that I do are, are when I bring in guests with different views and we do an at issue session, you know, and the at issue session is basically they all have different points of view and those tend to go over really well. So, I mean, it, it, I'm surprised more speakers aren't doing that. Uh, because really, if you're hosting, all you have to do is facilitate it and just make sure, you know, nothing gets out of hand, but everybody can sort of contribute their thoughts and ideas and away you go. And they can be very popular uh, things to do. Anyway, go yeah, ahead. Absolutely. And then also don't forget text. Transcribing yes. is something really good because once you've got the video recorded, it's easy to grab an audio, then it's easy to get the uh, text transcribed. Some wonderful services like Upwork, uh, Freelancer, and many others are available where you can get people that will transcribe very well and do it for very reasonable prices. So look into that and see what that's like. But there are a lot, these are uh, eight ways right now, just so far eight that you can use to Great. transform this and monetize. It. But let me show you the last few here. Number nine, coaching. Lots of people, a lot of people that are speakers are going into coaching one on one using a tool like Zoom is what I would recommend for that. Maybe Skype would also work. You could use that for one on one coaching and then a group coaching where you could bring on a given number of people and you can do that in a secure environment. You can do that in a private environment so that it's not uh, broadcast to the world. Also covering events. When events happen, take your smartphone and by using a tool like Periscope, and there's some others out there as well, Periscope gives you the ability to have a live video feed of an important event that's going on. People that follow you then will be leaning forward saying, wow, I've got to find out what Sally's doing here. She's really good. Sally Speaker does all this wonderful material. They will want to stay close to you and you're giving more and more free material so that then when it comes time that you're offering a product or your service or your coaching, whatever it might be, people will say, you've already shown me that you are competent, you know your product, you're also not pushy, and you really have my best interest at heart. Okay, I will open up my purse and give you a few shekels so that that way I can make my life better by being involved with you. Yeah, now, yeah. And, and then another uh, real hot uh, tool right now for video is Facebook Live. They That's opened that up last week. 
uh, to everyone so that now you can go live on Facebook and reach all the people that are on your Facebook uh, feed. They would see that you are live at that moment and be able to uh, increase your exposure. I mean, it is better now for us with the technology like Facebook Live, like Blab and other tools as speakers for monetizing this and making money than ever before. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, t- number 12, we've done a little bit with this already, market research. It's one thing for me to say, well, you know, I think they really want green widgets. Well, we don't know that. Terry, you might think green widgets is what they want, but what really matters is what they think. And they might be saying, no, we want blue widgets. That's what we really want, you know, rather than the green. By doing market research and what we were saying before, like the number of props, when people really like something, they'll be giving a lot of props like this. That's one way to check. Also, the comments and the live chat. Look at what is going on there. You can see what's happening and do that. And let me finish this last one here, and then Richard will turn it over to you so we can do that. And we want to bring some more people on board with the few minutes that we have left. Masterminding is a fabulous way to do this. Getting a tool like Zoom, a tool like Skype, I think would be better. You can bring in up to 10 people with Skype and with Zoom. I believe it's uh, 25 people. (laughs) be wrong on that, but it's uh, whatever the number is, you can bring in a group and uh, the ideal for a mastermind often is around six to eight people. But this way you can have it as a private meeting. You're able to bring in people that might be scattered geographically, but you're able to have a quality meeting. And this is just another way you can monetize it because people that are in speaking, people that have been involved in mastermind groups say it's one of the most important ways to make money learning from people and doing that. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I mean, these are great items in terms of uh, what you can do business wise to look at that. Uh, I noticed that um, in terms of Blab, when you're talking about one on one coaching or you're talking about uh, um, using Periscope and some other tools, Blab is probably is, is Blab a tool you could use for that or is one that you prefer maybe not use for, for that kind of stuff? Well, Blab is a tool that you can use for a lot of different items. Uh, I would use it for uh, sharing ideas. Mainly, I would use this one for sending a message out quickly. Sending out a message quickly of here's what's happening right now, or we're promoting a particular topic. You saw how we did it this time. Here for CAPS, I said, hey, be sure and register. People went over and registered so that we had an idea how many people were coming. We had an idea what was going on. So if you think of it more as a public tool, you'll probably be right on target. But it does have that private capability now. And so I think we're going to be exploring and seeing what possibilities are there as well. One of the things I want to mention, I noticed that Gina put in a comment uh, regarding uh, just asking questions, if you're uh, if you're online, if you look at the live chat side, uh, you'll see that where it says send the message, uh, you can see like a little forward slash just on the right hand bottom corner. If you click on that, it actually gives you all the symbols that you can use at this point in time. Forward Q, ask for a question. Forward uh, slash forward slash uh, topic, uh, a new topic. Forward slash help. Uh, shrug, uh, notify, so you can see exactly what you want to do. So if you're looking to ask a question, you actually need to use the forward forward queue. And then that puts it into the question box for us. Um, I noticed you just brought one over. Um, yes. Are you part of the Blabaholics community? <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, what I did there is uh, we had that Phil Gerbachak. Hi, Phil. Glad to have you with us today. And uh, a genius on things, technology, and just a marvelous human being. Also, when you type slash Q space and then your question, which is what Phil did here, it puts yeah. it over on the left side so that we as administrators can see that. And then I go, oh, that is a dandy good question. Let me yeah. put that one up there. And I just click on a pin question option that's available for me. And then it pops it onto the screen as one of the uh, quadrants on there. So that way it highlights it. People can see it and go, ah, Phil asked this question. We can read it clearer this way. And Phil uh, is right on target with all of that. So we got another question from Monique. And uh, is there's an echo when Richard is speaking. What might be causing that? So let's do a little bit of a tech that's question. probably your mic. Your uh, volume might be a little loud. You might turn your loud. volume down a little bit on how you're hearing my voice. It, what is happening, God is in the echo, is you getting my your voice. If you hold, held your microphone right up to the speaker, you can get that nasty feedback. Mm-hmm. Turning it down a little bit can help on that. If your sound is coming through the earbuds alone, yeah. then that might be that's leaking out. Or it could be that your uh, microphone might be a little farther away. If you could bring the microphone even closer um, to you. 
my uh, we talked about this beforehand and, and stuff so i did go out and buy the yeti microphone yes indeed we're stuff. yeti microphone twins we're yeti microphone twins. Uh, uh, from blue microphones hey we're gonna plug in there for them and no i don't and, get anything for that and if you look at this okay everybody's looking at what this means if you look at this my microphone is only about this far <laughs> this far from my face uh, so I'm trying to keep it there. Now, I don't know if it's picking up maybe some of the sound in my uh, in my earbuds, but I am trying to keep it to, to that space. So I, I turned it down a bit. Monique, maybe you can send a note to me and let me know if it actually helped. Uh, David Cutthrow has joined us. So you brought uh, you brought David on board. Yes, hey, David. David. Hello there, sir. You have a question. No, it's I just a little circle said call in. So I thought it was a command. So I responded obediently <laughs> as I always do. Well, okay. we're just delighted to have you here joining us. Uh, but do, if you did have a question, what would it be? How's that for a good question to ask? Well, I guess it's kind of a general question because there's so many different approaches one can take, so many different tools. So you could use Blab, Zoom, you know, Skype, uh, go to webinars. There's so many different ways to interact. So yeah. what are some of the decision criteria you should be using in picking one? Because it's too easy to, to try to do a bunch of them and do none of them well. Yeah, that, I think that's an exceptionally good question. I'm getting that a lot. And I think probably what I'm going to do is like within some of my content, put it together. Uh, each tool has a different strength and a different weakness than others. There's places where you'd want to use Zoom and uh, there's places where you'd want to use Skype. There's places where you'd want to use Blab. And so it all depends. Blab is good for sending a message out quickly, extemporaneously. You're doing it in the moment, moving around. Zoom would be really good to create products where you want it to be right. You want to have the slides from your PowerPoint or keynote going, and then people see you on the screen. Skype, I find, is really good when people go, no, 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 I don't want anything else. Don't confuse me. I know Skype. I'm going to use it. And so, okay, fine. We'll use that. So one thing that might be really helpful as a product for someone out there to do is just as a little matrix, basically describing what you just did, Terry. So are you trying yep. to do this? The, you know, sort of the strengths of each and yeah, almost yeah. like a Q&A, what, right? Exactly. That's right. One of the things that I'm thinking of putting together, like imagine a spreadsheet across the top would be your questions across down the side would be Skype, uh, go to meeting, which I would not use for much of anything, but uh, go on, et cetera, et cetera. Go to meeting, go to webinar, or just like so 20th century. But uh, kind of thing. <laughs> my contribution, no, I put the first five dollars U.S. Oh, there we go. Five dollars <laughs> U.S. So you know what? Since since uh, since you brought up money, David, um, Terry and I were talking about uh, different pricing models, and and uh, one of the things I've been really doing a lot lately is researching and uh, observing Generation Y and some of the Millennium Generation, but there's sort of more gener yeah Generation Y and then some of the older Millennium, and I'm finding it very interesting some of the pricing models that they're going with because. Uh, they're going, some of them highly successful at going at price as you go models or price if you like me model, pay me if you like me model. And uh, I'm connected with uh, with uh, the Texan in Tokyo uh, right now, a woman by the name of Grace, and she's using that model extremely well. So I, I'd be interested to see if, if you could apply that kind of model to something like this where, you know what, uh, there's no fee, but it's not free. Give me what you think this session is worth. And be curious to know if anybody else has used that kind of so crazy that, model. That's an interesting thought, Richard, because another use for that is if you have a particular charity, like a lot of, of, uh, of CAP speakers and others that are listening and have a favorite charity, and be yes. able to do a, 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 um, you know, a Zoom call or whatever that you could say, hey, if you value this, here's, here's a, a charity they like to support and let people directly support through the charity. That would yeah, be really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think the real key is right, there's a lot of different ways that we can generate funds, that we can generate goodwill out there. And uh, what you want to do and what I would just take away from this is don't get overwhelmed. It's easy to get overwhelmed by that, but don't. Instead, study each one a little bit at a time. Get into Blab, study that for a while, kind of let that be a project this week and work with it. And then next week, it might be something else. And the next week, something else. Get to know what these are doing, what they can do. And another thing, be willing to part with a few coins. Hire people that know how to use this. There's lots of yeah. people out there that do it. Yeah. You can get them. This is why we have these tools. And they yeah. can show you what to do and how to do it. I find that that's what I'm doing. For instance, I want to learn some more about uh, Bitcoin. I want to learn more about Pinterest. I want to learn some more about these. Well, I'm going to find people that know that and hire them through Upwork or other tools, other places, and learn it that way. So another, yeah. connecting this to what you're talking about with a mastermind <clears throat> might be something interesting to do if you had five people that are all sort of sim similar level of technical expertise. 
to go out and each one looks at a, one of these different ones that comes back and talks about it. Right. Cause it's easy yep. to hear someone that's an expert talk about thinking is kind of go, Whoa, that's way beyond me. But to have people kind of an equal level of understanding of technology, each investigates one of these different ones comes back on a blab call or zoom call to talk about it. really good use of the technology and the use of the mastermind resources. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Yes, David. Uh, listen, Terry, we're coming down to almost like the last 10 minutes or so of the show. Um, so I was hoping that maybe what we could do is get people to post their questions and we can maybe go through some questions and uh, and comments and see uh, exactly uh, uh, where we're at in that. Now, Monique, uh, Monique uh, did another one, too. Well, let's do Monique's first. So, Monique, you're, you're quite active on here. Uh, will you have uh, the chat comments available afterwards? So that was the question. Will, are, are the chat comments available afterwards after you do a session? I believe the answer is yes on that. We will be able to do it. And uh, we, um, if there's not a way to do it, then uh, I don't know what we can do. But I, I'm pretty sure we can. And what we'll do is we will just send that out to those who have registered for this. You're already here. We've got your email address, and it makes it very easy for communication. Good question. Yeah, so, so Gina just replied to that and says, yes, chat comments are available in the replay. Now, Absolutely. Gina made a very interesting comment, too, that ended up in her question point. Uh, it is good to give people on, oh, see, it's, it moved on me. It is good to give people on the Blab video a call to action, free gift with an option, free Facebook group, um, offer a way to keep uh, keep in touch. Uh, where, can you elaborate a bit more on that, Terry? Uh, let's see, say, say that again. I was looking over here at uh, other. I was just going by Gina's comment. It says it's a good to give people a, a blab, a call to action, uh, something free like a gift or a Facebook item or something along that line. There it is yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. And of course, once again, I agree with Gina. She's the one that helps me a lot on these things. And I really appreciate her help. Thank you, Gina. Uh, they give something free. I think that's a very good thing to do. And I think that it's uh, real handy to have some kind of report. One of the things I'm working on right now is to say, okay, let's put some ideas together to say, here's a free report, which then can lead to people getting more information from us uh, and uh, doing a, a lot that way. Okay. Um, Donald Cooper has got a question. Hi, Donald. It's been a while since I've seen you. Uh, will you talk about how to actually set up uh, and to do a Blab session? Um, we so want to do that. Probably that would be, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot, uh, but it would take a little bit more time than we have right here, right now. But to set up a Blab session, you would go to blab.im. Notice yeah. it's im, not a, another extension on there. Blab.im, you sign up for it. And then you're able to uh, create uh, what you want to do and you learn as you go. I would recommend, though, as you before you do it, get some instruction, get some help from somebody that knows how to do that, that can help you. And really, within uh, 15, 30 minutes or so, you should be able to see most of what uh, is there. At least, Richard, you've seen it yourself that way. You know what? I think uh, you can learn in about 10 minutes. It doesn't even take that long. Uh, once you go to the Blab I am. Uh, you log on with uh, your Twitter account. I use my Twitter account, so we have the Twitter feed ability. Oh, we didn't mention about the Twitter feed ability. Um, and uh, then also, uh, basically, I monitored some blabs and then just hit, you know, create a blab, and boom, you know, I, I was playing creating a private blab and just to sort of goof around with it a little bit to see what I see what was there for me. So it's not Donald. It's not that difficult at all. It's one of it, one of the things that's nice about this technology is that. The Blab folks have made it quite easy to use compared to having to have other stuff that integrates with this in order for it to work. You know, and you're not really having to integrate a lot of applications here. You know, yeah. um, when we spoke on Thursday, I want to go back to the Twitter thing. Uh, you mentioned, uh, or maybe it was Gina mentioned, uh, that you can actually integrate this with Twitter, so you can have a Twitter feed going on along with it. it was I? Am I correct on that, or am I wrong on that? I, uh, is, is that the yes. case? Yes, you can have a Twitter feed going over on the right. Right now, we've got, uh, uh, let's see, if we put this here, we got the embed code. No, that's not. Uh, and there is a way to do that, but I'm going to have to do some research on that to see how that's done. But you can so, that way uh, have information available for uh, Twitter, I think. And matter of fact, one of the nice things about this is when you don't know something, because none of us knows everything, I like the way the Japanese say it. None of us is as smart as all of us. <laughs> so we figure, okay, we can ask uh, if someone has an idea on that of how to uh, pull that up, then we can do it. Yeah, so so there's something, uh, no, no Twitter feed. No oh, on Twitter feed from uh, Genius Gina. Uh, and so we're going to say, no, there is not a way to do that. I think there used to be, but I think they uh, dropped that. Okay, so then maybe a misunderstanding on my side or something too. Um, so a few other questions here. 
Um, I guess let me just take a look and see what else we have coming here. It's a great little tool, you know, like I, I'm liking what I can see. We have 161 people that were interested in the program. We have 25 with us right now, if I understand the name, numbers correctly. Lots of questions coming in and stuff, you know, uh, with the systems that it works on and that too. Um, and by David, the way, Richard, if I can mention something for the speakers that are watching this, think yeah. about this. We've got 25 people on now. When we started, we had 24. Often in seminars and webinars like this, the interest goes, you know, you start with 25, you end up with three remaining, you yeah. know, something like that. But uh, what happens is because it's video, it's alive, you're seeing you on the screen. This is a tool that can make you money. It's something yeah. that I encourage you as a fellow speaker to look into and get to know this. Yeah, this, it is actually really sharp. And the other thing I noticed, too, when I was attending conferences last week, it's so weird to say I was attending conferences on Blab, but that's what I did. Um, I was watching the numbers bounce up and down. So very similar to people getting up out of the room and leaving and then coming back in and, and uh, you know, uh, in and out, in and out. Uh, the numbers would always shift and move around and everything, just depending on what people's interests are. The other interesting thing is, is that... Um, if anybody's on Blab, uh, you can set your Blab profile up so that you uh, receive notifications when certain Blab sessions are going on. So you could be sitting working at your computer and somebody could be doing a Blab about improving your coaching practice or whatever it might be. And you'll be notified that that Blab is, is going to become available. And then you just click and you can join it. So uh, it can become a a very good uh, method of, of educating yourself. So I have been playing with it a little bit, Terry. I, I oh, good. you know, you know, I, I went in and played with all of my profile items, items, checked them all, and and see what would happen. Got a little bit too many notifications, and then I shifted them uh, and down them a little bit so I wouldn't get so many notifications. But uh, but it's sort of really cool and and very slick in terms of just being able to see what blabs are going on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, very yeah. good point. Yeah. And by so, the way, uh, we had a question here from uh, Nathan as well. Uh, Blab does yeah. not work, or comment, does not work well with Safari. In my experience, it doesn't work with Firefox either. And stick with Chrome. Chrome is the one they recommend. I've seen yeah. it work with Firefox, and they've said that it should. Safari, sometimes it might be a little difficult, and Internet Explorer over on the Windows side. So uh, I just kind of put a concur with you. And not only that, but the folks at Blab have suggested and recommend using Chrome for it. Yeah, so exactly what you're go. saying, Nathan. Yeah. Now, uh, David uh, Guthrow has another question. Does it impact? Uh, does it impact on clout? So on your cloud score, only to the extent that you have people responding to you. Uh, having written the book with Gina Carr on clout matters uh, a few years ago, what it is, what matters on clout is the number of people that respond to you. If people see what you're doing and then respond, yeah, it can do that. I mean, for instance, getting a front page coverage on the New York Times or Globe and Mail, that could impact your clout score only because people would see you and go online and say things about you. So your clout score is always impacted by the people that are responding to you, not what you send out. Is the cloud score still a really important score? I, I mean, where, where are things at? Things change so much. I haven't looked at cloud for a while. Yeah, it does change a lot. And what we see are the principles um, we talk about in our book uh, are the yeah. engagement. That's what matters most. It is used some still, and it can be a tiebreaker, but it's not as strong as uh, many had thought that it was going to be. But I still think the principles of engaging with people and using it as one of, not the only one, but one of the tools that you'll use to see how effective your promos are and your engagement, it's a, still a good tool for that. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think there's things that uh, for Blab that maybe uh, as professional speakers that we shouldn't use it for? Uh, for Blab, I would say if it's if you have a very private meeting, it would not be as good for that. I would use a tool like Zoom for a real private meeting. It has higher level security and it's designed more for private meetings as well as for public meetings. Those will work very well. And if you really want security, then you know, you're gonna to have to do something uh, different, secure and private lines. It's a game that is really hot. And uh, in the news lately, we've seen a lot of concern about privacy and yeah. security on the net. And I predict that is only going to increase in the future. Oh yeah, I mean, once you're a professional speaker and you're blogging, you got your website, you're on LinkedIn, Facebook, I mean, your life is public. And uh, so, I mean, security uh, can be a real issue. Uh, another question I have for you, and I'm going to bring up another question to somebody else, uh, is that right now we can have up to four people on, on a blab. 
or three people in a presentation. Um, what about if you you decided to use Blab, but just to do a presentation and where you're not going to interview or or anybody? Do uh, you think it's it's okay to use Blab for that purpose? You could, and that would be a valid choice for it. I think you could have you on the screen, put your uh, PowerPoint slides, your keynote slides over on SlideShare, which is yeah. part of LinkedIn, and then you would be able to go through them, much like I did today, to show you what it can do. However, the real beauty of Blab is bringing in people. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's where it sparkles. I'm glad we were able to do that, uh, at least with uh, David and Gothro, and be able to bring that in. But the more people you can bring in, it's like you have a lot of uh, richness and uh, real dynamism to it, getting different opinions and having different questions and having people on the screen talking. Yeah, no, that's. I think that's actually quite important. Uh, I think one more sort of point here. Um, uh, Lauren uh, mentions that you can also customize your Blab profile to be different from your Twitter profile if you choose so. And, and you know, Lauren, that's a really yes. good point because I actually went in and I had my, I logged in with Blab, and, oh, sorry, logged in with Twitter and uh, and I noticed that my profile was was the same. And then I went in and changed it uh, so I'd have a slight variation on it. And, and I thought that was a pretty interesting feature to be able to do that. So uh, a really good point overall. Um, you know, it, it's amazing how quickly an hour goes by, an hour and 15 minutes in this case, because we did a pre-show, you know, Terry. Um, I, I think I got to start the process of, of closing off here. And, and I want to make sure if you're part of CAPS and everything, I'd like you to stay on. Uh, here for a moment because I, I want to mention a few things. But Terry, uh, you know, no doubt, I, I I always love getting together with you. I'm looking forward to uh, all the last times we've met have basically been via video or telephone conversations, email conversations. It's been a while since we've had a nice cold brewski. Um, so I mean, uh, at some point in time, I hope you, you uh, will come to our side of the world. Absolutely, <laughs> right? love it up there. We had a great time in Winnipeg. <laughs> Great time. Uh, um, so definitely, this is my thank you to you. But I want to mention to the CAPS members on here, I mean, we do have a spring and summer program coming down the pipe. Um, May, uh, I believe what we're going to be talking about in May is about writing a book. I know a lot of speakers gear up in the summer to write their book. Uh, so I, I think uh, our guest, um, once we sort of confirm on this, will be a, a, a writing coach. Uh, in June, it's all going to be about outsourcing your business. Um, outsourcing your spe speaker business has become really important. So I have a guest coming on to talk about outsourcing and different ways to outsource your business. Uh, even I outsource my business. You know, people sometimes look at me and go, well, you know, you work by yourself a team you don't have a team that's not true i got a virtual assistant i'm an accountant uh, I have a web designer, uh, I have a book designer, graphic designer, I got a content editor and a copy editor and they are all outsourced right and all through upwork and you know, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, in July, uh, Colleen Francis was originally supposed to come in in May, but she's actually going to be coming in in, in July now. We're going to, have to be talking about the, the sales process for speakers and and uh, looking at some really good content there. And I'm thinking about doing a special. Uh, if, you know, if, if the CAPS members are cool with this, uh, I specialize in strategic planning, uh, usually because I host these type of events. I don't really present my own material, but I wouldn't mind doing a session. I think they give back the CAPS in the sense of strategic planning planning the one page business plan uh, for your organization. So I'm hoping maybe to, to do a little bit of a, a special event at some point in time, maybe using a technology like this and say, here are some ideas that you can do in terms of your planning. So let me know what you think on that. So, and if you have any other ideas, I mean, just send me a note at richard.setforsuccess.ca and uh, for programming, I'm always looking to do programming and, and uh, that we look to do six to nine shows a year. Um, so, you know, with those six to nine shows, we want to make sure that they're of value to you. Uh, give, um, I'm calling them high fives. Give our friend Terry Brock here uh, a whole bunch of high fives, little hands down the right hand corner. You know, granted, I'm competitive, so I'd like to see my numbers go up too. So give me a few too. High five, high five. Yeah, a few to you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, high five we can do this, right? You know. Uh, other than that, I mean, we'll be back uh, hopefully next month with uh, with another session of Grow Your Business, Grow Your Life uh, as a benefit to CAPS members, Canadian Association of Professional Speakers. And uh, you, and I always love saying this, because the choice is yours, you make it a great day. <laughs> so now you got to tell me what to do. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, we're finished, I think. At least we're yeah. official, officially there. We yeah. haven't stopped the recording yet, but uh, now we, we can really say I'm going to pause the recording now. So thank you, those of, those of you watching us via recording. Thank you for that. And we're going to pause that.